So practicals with springs are fairly common and this one here is no exception. Now these things here are small, expendable, extendable springs, I suppose. Um, and they, they, you know, they're, they're kind of, they're used all the time, but they are quite dangerous, okay? Because if they snap, what happens is that uh, the ends can fling around really quickly. Uh, and if it's sharp at the end, that can actually really kind of quite badly scratch your eye. So even though they don't look that dangerous, it is best practice to wear uh, glasses or safety goggles of some kind. Now the setup I have here, I have my retort stand. I've got the rod part of the end of the, the clamp just over here for, for me to hang my spring on. And then what I've got is I've got my meter ruler set up in a different retort stand so I can bring it quite close by. Because what I'm trying to do is look at the extension, okay? It's not about the length, it's about the extension of this spring. And uh, the first experiment that you can do is maybe looking at the extension of springs in series, okay? And all these ones do, they just kind of, um, a bit like trying to get keys on your key ring. All you need to do is just kind of sort of join the two ends together and you can just keep extending up to, you know, five, six springs, however many you want. So uh, one method I've seen for this uh, investigation is you look at a certain point of the spring. And to do this, you want to make sure that nothing's moving, okay? And you want to get your eye down level to this to reduce any parallax error. And then you can record the original starting length of this spring. I've then got uh, a one Newton uh, weight or a hundred gram mass. Okay, and all I'm gonna do is hang that on there. And this is why it's actually quite useful to have your ruler in a separate retort stand, because you can actually then uh, bring it around so it doesn't actually interfere with the spring. So the spring is just hanging nicely. And again, you can then record uh, the, the new length and the extension. And you just simply repeat that for a number of different springs in series. You can then uh, record your data for n, the number of springs, and also x, your extension. You can then plot this uh, and then kind of do your own analysis of that data. Another thing that you can investigate is the behavior of springs in parallel. Now, what I'm using for this, I've got two springs and I've just got a plastic stirring rod. Uh, this is the kind of thing you find in like chemistry departments. And um, depending on what you do, you might put maybe a kilogram mass onto the bottom. Now, the plastic I find works quite well because it doesn't uh, kind of let these things slide around too much, but it does. it is the kind of thing that takes a bit of trial and error. So what I've got is the rod at the bottom uh, with about a mass of, uh, you know, you can have up to a kilogram here. And again, what you can look at is the original length of the springs and then the extension. And then you can just repeat this for two springs, three, four, five, six springs, okay? All of them in parallel. Uh, and again, you know, a bit of trial and error, you kind of get these springs on and what you'll find is, oh, what you'll find is that uh, with a bit more care than I just did there, uh, you'll find that again, you've got different data uh, for the extension, depending on how many springs that you have in parallel. So just a final point on the data, what you're going to be looking at is the total number of springs, perhaps this is in series or parallel, and that's just a number, so it's a unitless quantity. And then you're thinking about maybe looking at the original length, which is maybe L naught, and then the final length, which we often we call L. Uh, and both of these, we, uh, you know, it's best practice to record in meters. Uh, and then what we're going to look at is the extension, which is just the uh, um, final length minus the original length, again, measured in meters. Okay. When it comes to plotting this, okay, it's, it's a bit like you kind of sort of reverse the axis from what you'd normally expect. Uh, and it's best practice to do it like this. And so here we have the extension on the y axis, okay, n on the bottom. Uh, and you should find that when there's no springs, the extension is zero. Uh, and as you have more springs, there's a greater extension. Um, and also it's maybe uh, a bit opposite when you've got um, springs which are in parallel. The more springs you have in parallel, the less the extension. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, depending on what your school has, you're gonna do this practical in a certain way. And there's extensions where you can look at how this relates to things like Young's modulus and the strain. But remember that the key thing is to make sure that even though these don't look dangerous, wear eye protection because you can have your eyes really close to it and you don't want this uh, scraping across the front of your eye. Thank you.